Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you that you joined our third webinar um, regarding Atlas Open Call. And uh, thank you that you are with us and uh, that you are that active asking questions and uh, being in touch. Uh, we appreciate your interest. Um, I'm Tamara and I don't know you, you know me, um, most of you by, by this time already. I'm, I'm the person who is receiving your questions first. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, our coordinator, Stefan Reeling. Um, thank you, Stefan, that you are that um, flexible, I would say, and you find always time to answer questions and participate in the webinars. I, I know how busy you are. And thank you again that you are here. Um, Stefan, um, as I said, is our coordinator of our project and he uh, works for Front for Institute for Intelligent Analysis and Information Systems, um, which is in Germany in Bonn. Um, and uh, Ioana Antonopoulou, um, uh, she's our colleague and uh, represents uh, agency ETAM, who is responsible for communication, overall communication uh, of our project and will be uh, here today to help you with uh, all the technical stuff. Right, uh, so basically uh, we announced today that we will be covering our um, uh, challenges or topics, as we say, it's uh, weed and pest control, irrigation and asset tracking and fleet management. And, um, yeah, so uh, of course we will be covering um, all your general uh, questions if you have them, uh, if, if they're not related to, to the first three topics, it's also okay. Please submit them and we will answer. So uh, we hope that uh, another our expert, Peter Frerlich, uh, will join us uh, later on, but um, yeah, if not, then not. Uh, if you will, I will introduce him a little bit uh, later. Okay, then, uh, Stefan, I will ask you to start, please, uh, with what you prepared. And I will, yeah, just a second, I will make you presenter very quickly. And, yeah. So, also from my side, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining this uh, session and your interest in our open calls. So I will, so I will, I'm just waiting until I, now I am the presenter and uh, I think now you see my, my screen, right? Yes, yes we do. Perfect. So then, uh, Again, well, welcome to this webinar where it's about uh, the Atlas Open Calls and in particular the, the first uh, three topics uh, we, we have opened and uh, we offer uh, to you to uh, submit proposals to. Um, I will shortly introduce you uh, the project for those who have not known uh, this or have not seen this before and then I will go into the, the topics and after that I will show a little bit uh, about the uh, Atlas reference architecture and in our pilot test sites. So what is Atlas? Atlas is a Horizon 2020 research project. Uh, we started in October last year. Uh, the project will run uh, over three years, uh, and it's uh, quite a large project uh, with uh, a funding of about uh, 13 million euros we received from the European Union. Um, the consortium is also quite uh, large. We are a, a group of 30 partners from eight uh, European countries. Um, uh, comprising universities and research institutions, uh, uh, significant industry involvement. Uh, we have more or less uh, all of the of the well-known uh, machinery manufacturers on board uh, of the of the consortium. Uh, we have a multitude of SMEs doing uh, innovative uh, uh, technology. Uh, 
are providing innovative technology uh, in the field of digital agriculture. And uh, we have uh, a multitude of uh, real farmers, commercial farms, and agricultural cooperatives on, uh, as part of the consortium. Um, you might have uh, heard of uh, various other projects dealing with uh, more or less the, the same uh, uh, questions we, we address in ATLAS. Um, this is uh, mainly to the fact that there are some uh, so-called uh, large-scale pilots uh, funded by the European uh, Union. And uh, in, the, in particular in the agri-food domain, there are currently two large-scale uh, pilots funded. Uh, one of them is, is Atlas, and uh, the uh, other project funded from the same call is the uh, Demeter project. Uh, on the top left, you, you see the, the logo. Uh, where Demeter is uh, written uh, correctly. Uh, I made a, a, a small typo here, uh, sorry for this. Um, but Demeter and Atlas are mainly dealing uh, with interoperability. Uh, these, this is the key topic uh, both in Demeter and Atlas, but the uh, approaches uh, both projects uh, follow to achieve this interoperability are, of course, uh, different, uh, the implementation of the uh, two projects uh, is different, uh, but uh, projects are funded from, from the same call. We are in, in close cooperation uh, and also Demeter offers uh, a series of open calls to uh, provide third party funding. Uh, the, the third project in, in this respect, uh, so to say the predecessor of uh, Atlas and Demeter is the uh, IOF 2020 project, which uh, is still running uh, this year, I think. And um, they also had a, a series of open calls. I'm actually not sure if they are still have, have some open calls running, but all these projects fit, fit in the topic of, of large scale pilots. Uh, uh, or in the group of large-scale pilots, which means that there is a uh, there are a multitude of demonstrators are, are set up and uh, a lot of uh, field studies were conducted in, in or are conducted in all of these uh, projects. So uh, after after this short overview about what what Atlas is, I will immediately jump in into our uh, open calls. Um, uh, you might have already seen uh, our our uh, our uh, Atlas web page, which offers uh, plenty of information about our open calls. Uh, we offered uh, multiple topics on on this uh, uh, for this open calls, where topics uh, which you could address with your proposals. And today I will uh, go a little bit into the detail of what is expected in the first three topics, weed and pest control, irrigation, and asset tracking and uh, feed management. Um, for all topics, it holds true that Atlas, uh, as I already mentioned, we have uh, lots of farmers and agricultural cooperatives in the consortium. Atlas will provide access to test sites, uh, access to, to, to data, and also access to, to all our, our experts we have in the consortium, our farming experts, our machinery experts, uh, providing you the, 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 the best support we uh, uh, possible. So let's start with the first topic, um, uh, which is about weed and, and pest control. So, um, I mean, the, the, the topic name says uh, it clearly what it is about. And uh, what, what we are looking for are for innovative uh, weeding and uh, uh, pest mitigation uh, projects. So it's uh, basically uh, weeding with, without uh, uh, herbicides or, or, or 
uh, pest control without pesticides. So that's that's the the main uh, uh, thing we are looking for. Also, early warning systems and risk assessment. So what what we could imagine here are, are some sort of uh, decision support system where you can as a, as a farmer where you can uh, provide data about your fields uh, about the, the surrounding of your fields and then you you uh, will uh, use a multitude of different uh, data sources which uh, give you somehow then uh, uh, estimate how vulnerable you are uh, for a, a specific kind of pest uh, or a specific kind of, of weed and uh, proposing the, the uh, respective mitigation measures or what what's also uh, what we can also think about is uh, doing a really mechanical uh, weeding um with with robots with innovative devices uh uh with steam with lasers everything here is is possible um to get get rid of of the weeds and to to keep the the, the, the good plants in in the field without using using for example glyphosate or, or or related products so this is this is something we could think about also, um, smart smart insect traps are, are an interesting topic here. That that you have uh, a, a, a trap with maybe uh, image processing uh, devices in, where you could automatically detect what kind of of uh, insects are in your field or around the field, so that that you get uh, also early or early warning um, <coughs> system. Uh, if if uh, a particular pest is emerging and which gives you uh, a little bit more time to to react and to especially to do uh, targeted interventions get get rid of the the habitats for a certain uh, kind of pest uh, for example or uh, also get get risk get rid of the origin of uh, emerging uh, weeds which you have in in the field and Atlas will, of course, provide uh, all the necessary data sets, of, if we have them, of course, um, and will allow uh, for the, the, um, uh, the connection to, to the Atlas network by providing detailed uh, API descriptions of how to do this. So that was the, the topic, weed and pest control. And uh, the next topic, uh, is about irrigation. It's a, a quite emerging topic also in, in uh, middle Europe, especially in, in Germany. Uh, we have already lots of, of problems related to, to drought. Um, and we, we are looking basically uh, for solutions to, to optimize ir irrigation. So the situation we, we have in, in Germany is that usually you you take your irrigation water from uh, the normal uh, drinking water supply from the draw wells, and uh, then you use that water to irrigate your fields. And you are subject to local regulation about the amount of of water you have to uh, you, you are allowed to to spray on the fields, because uh, still we we have to be able to. To do our daily shower so you cannot use all the water for for irrigating your your fields and uh, the key here is that uh, that you really uh, only use that amount of water which is really necessary to to grow uh, the plants so what we are looking for here are uh, all kinds of solution uh, giving uh, a estimate about uh, the, the water availability for plants, for example. You need, uh, would need soil moisture, you would need uh, weather forecasts, weather nowcasts, you would uh, need data from, from satellites, and, and also may, maybe uh, other, other kinds of, of sensors to estimate how much water is, is there, how much water can be used, uh, how much water will be needed in the next days and then 
having all this information at hand, you can uh, make an irrigation plan, irrigation maps. So this is this is what what the, the farmers are, are are looking for, and and usually they have they have already uh, uh, irrigation systems uh, installed on their farms. At least I know from one of our German farmers he has an uh, irrigation system at at hand, which which can also uh, irrigate uh, specific sectors of a field with different amounts of of water and what what. Uh, one use case here is, is for example, that, that you really measure uh, the field on, on a local base uh, uh, in a 10 by 10 meter raster, for example, and you uh, know at, at which part of the field you, you need which amount of water. Um, and uh, then this water is applied by the irrigation device. Uh, having a, a, a suitable irrigation map at hand. Also, what is what is thinkable here is the whole uh, automated documentation uh, process, uh, how much water was uh, uh, taken out from, from, the, from the well. Usually these, these wells have uh, measurement devices there, which then uh, needs to be needed to be connected to, to the Atlas network in order to, to uh, uh, easily access the, the, the data of uh, yeah, about uh, the water flows and uh, how, how much water was taken out. Also, what, what we could uh, provide here from Atlas are, are sensors, uh, measurement data, data from, from sensor networks, uh, satellite data, and also access to um, uh, to test sites where irrigation is, is a topic. These are in particular test sites in, in Greece, where we have uh, uh, mostly uh, orchards, um, and also in, in Germany, where it's about, about potatoes, I think, and also about, about uh, corn. Um, so this is the, the irrigation topic. And uh, the last topic we have is uh, Asset tracking and fleet management. Um, <clears throat> so this means a, a farmer wants uh, to know uh, where all the, the machines, all the implements of the machines are, and uh, where they have been used. So, for example, if it if it comes to uh, fertilizing, if you have uh, slurry tanks which you fill up uh, with the, the slurry you have from, from your uh, animals on your operation. <clears throat> that slurry might have a, a different mixture of, of N, P, and K, uh, depending on the, the, the kind of animal, on the kind of feeding you provide to the animal. So it might differ. And, and what, you, what you want to know as a farmer, uh, uh, what amount of, of N, P, and K you have been uh, bringing out to, to which field you have to document this. And if you want to automate this, you have to uh, know on the one hand what kind of slurry is in, in the tanker, uh, but also uh, uh, at which field, which tanker uh, has been uh, applying uh, slurry, for example, or other kinds of, of fertilizer. So, and you want that in, a, in an automated way. So what, what you need for this is you need an identification of, of each, uh, of each uh, machine, of each implement, uh, and you need the, the exact position of, of this machine over, over time. And uh, then you can automatically uh, collect this information through the, the Atlas uh, interoperability network and you have it uh, by one click available in your farm management system and, and you can continue with the with the documentation with your planning without uh, having the need to manually enter all the data in, in different systems so that's the that's the uh, the, the requirement here so we, we are looking for for a solution uh, for solutions here, making use of, of positioning data, uh, making it also, for example, possible to, to identify all these, these uh, machines 
devices easily when they, for example, come back to the operation. You know, machine XYZ is now uh, back on my operation and I could use them for, for other tasks. That, that you can do these things in in a uh, automated fashion and avoiding uh, uh, the manual entry of, of data in, in system. So these are the, the the main solutions we are we are looking for here. So what what we can provide is we can provide you access to to all the the, the machinery data needed for for this. Uh, mainly it's the the uh, the GPS, the, the geo posi positioning devices, and um, I will come to this in a second. We have uh, uh, multiple possibilities to to get this data and to provide this data within the Atlas network, and we are looking for solutions uh, making making the use of of this data. So I've been talking about uh, our uh, interoperability architecture or atlas interoperability network uh, just two slides explaining briefly what this is um, so what what we did in in atlas so far is uh, as we are dealing with interoperability of of sensors of machines of robots of data platforms of data processing software uh, we want to to uh, make all these entities to so to say talk together and uh, for this, in, in the last months, we have uh, specified, and we are still specifying, a, a reference architecture, uh, which uh, is, is already in the first uh, stage of implementation, and which will allow for, for that particular interoperability. And uh, the, the concepts we are following with this architecture is that it's, uh, it's really distributed, uh, we have no data silos and, and no central data hubs and only a minimum of, of central components are needed to uh, make this uh, architecture or this interoperability network working. Um, we are looking at trusted and autonomous participants here and uh, the principle of data serenity. Uh, and full control over the data apply for, for this uh, architecture. Um, data in this architecture is exchanged through uh, so-called uh, services, dedicated connectors, which enable the, the exchange of data between all these entities. Um, what we have in detail here uh, are two basic concepts uh, to, to exchange or to make this data exchange happen. The uh, one, one concept is, uh, is a more service-oriented architecture-based uh, approach uh, where you connect uh, different data platforms, different uh, data clouds to exchange the data. And we provide also uh, uh, standardized uh, onboard and on on-site computing uh, platforms, devices which allow you to to access data uh, in the field on the machine and, and on the on the robot, for example. So these are the the two uh, main concepts <clears throat> offered by Atlas to exchange the the data. Um, uh, what we have already received uh, within the, the last weeks are, of course, a lot of, of questions. And uh, the, the, the most frequent ones uh, will be, will be uh, explained by me now. So hopefully all your, your main questions are already addressed by this. But if you have uh, further questions, uh, of course, feel free to approach us. So one, one question which we are frequently uh, getting asked is what is Atlas and, and what Atlas will deliver? Um, and the answer is we will deliver that interoperability network to exchange data based on a service-oriented uh, architecture. So it's, it's no real platform like like Amazon or, or, or Facebook or these the, the thing you, you have in mind when you're talking about a, a platform uh, we, we are not really a data space or a data hub where you 
can put all your data in where it's uh, central, centrally stored and administrated. Uh, no Atlas will provide a, a <coughs> network uh, and the, the means to ex exchange data, the infrastructure that that will be provided by by Atlas. Um, and uh, in Atlas, each participant is re responsible to implement uh, all the services needed to to access the the uh, respective functionality and Atlas will provide uh, detailed API descriptions uh, on how to do this in order to make uh, your solution uh, ready to be connected to, to the Atlas network. Uh, another uh, question we are receiving frequently, who will be the owner of the developed application if, if you join the, the open calls and, and do something there? So, uh, the short answer is you are the, the owner. The, all the IPR uh, be, uh, belongs to, to you. And you are also free to commercialize your, your applications, your, your products you, you are developing, you are uh, further extending with the funding we provide. And uh, of course, this is the, the, the thing we want to achieve. We want to build a, a sustainable business ecosystem. So all these applications where, where you uh, have something uh, ready then as a product are highly welcome and you are the owner of, of everything. Um, another question is what, what you should really deliver. Uh, so we are looking for digital services connected to the Atlas network. So that is something you, you need to provide. You need to implement uh, the uh, respective Atlas data services to, to make your work uh, available within the Atlas network. And uh, of course, you need to, to add value to, to the farmer's workflow. So you need to develop something which is, is really needed. Um, from the Atlas projects uh, will be provided uh, uh, extensive specification of uh, various service templates, which will help you to uh, implement uh, such services. Uh, this is the main thing you, you can uh, expect from Atlas. Uh, also, the, <clears throat> the, the central components needed uh, to, to uh, connect to and to run the, the network, uh, mainly the Atlas service registry. This is something we, we will provide from Atlas and uh, you will get everything from us uh, to uh, enable you to do uh, the, the actual implementation. Um, uh, one last question we, uh, we frequently get uh, that someone asks, okay, I have an idea, I have a solution, I have an algorithm. Uh, is it a valid contribution? Uh, are we allowed to, to submit uh, uh, um, uh, to the open calls? And uh, the answer here is if it adds value to the farming workflow and if it can be integrated into the Atlas network, it is uh, a valid uh, uh, contribution and it is uh, very welcome then. So we, we are really looking for things which can be used by, by end users, by, by farmers, uh, <clears throat> but also by machinery manufacturers, by, by food processing industry, all along the agricultural value chain. All these end users, um, <clears throat> if they can do something with your solution, um, <clears throat> it's a valid contribution to Atlas. And we have provided that, that list of possible topics, but you are not restricted to these. If you have a completely different idea where you think that that could work out, um, then just submit it to our uh, open technology uh, topic. And uh, you can be sure we will have a look at it and you will get a, a review for this. So then just uh, looking at the time, uh, we'll just briefly go over the farms and test sites. So we have uh, 13 agricultural operations uh, across Europe. Uh, a lot of different things are, are planted and grown on these uh, farms. And uh, we have also a multitude of operations uh, providing uh, uh, livestock farming uh, facilities. We have poultry, we have, uh, we have uh, cattle, we have pigs, we have cows. So we have, I would say most of the <clears throat> uh, agricultural domain is covered by our farms and test sites. 
as I already said, we are, we are a large scale pilot and we are doing a, a lot of uh, pilot studies on these test sites. Here you see an overview where all the, the uh, test sites are uh, located in, in Europe and what is what is done there. And um, looking at, looking at uh, the high level topics of these pilot studies, uh, we can uh, see four, four main uh, main topics which will be addressed by these pilot studies. It's the, the classical uh, precision farming task, the targeted application of plant protection, so really detailed interventions on, on the field. Uh, we have the, the advanced irrigation management, we have uh, soil state and soil readiness analysis, so which is related to, to fertilizing, to, to sowing, to all these kind of things. And we have the behavioral analysis of, of livestock. So these are the, the four main topics where, where all our, our use cases are, are then um, uh, covered with. So just to summarize it, uh, ATLAS is about interoperability. We want to achieve a new level of interoperability, interoperability with that project. We want to uh, make it possible that you can easily connect uh, machine sensors and uh, data services, and uh, we really want to simplify processes uh, within uh, digital agriculture and adding value to the whole agricultural value chain. So that's it for now, and, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward for your for your questions. No. Thank you very much, Stefan. Yes, we already have questions. Um, and uh, I would start with a budget question um, we, we just received and uh, very quickly to cover it. And then uh, a few technical questions that I would uh, ask you, Stefan, to, to answer. Thank you very much for your comprehensive uh, information about the project. As, uh, as usual, very, very clear. So I will quickly share my screen. Um, to answer this question. The question is about budget. What's the maximum amount? Um, uh, yeah, let me know if you see my screen now. Um, Not yet. Even not now, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the question is, um, how um, is the maximum amount um, 75,000 or um, 85,000? So now you, you should see. No. That's so strange. Um, okay, we won't uh, lose time on that. Um, the question is from Konstantinos. Is uh, I saw the maximum funding has been increased to uh, 85,000 instead of 75. Is it a typo or uh, the right information? So the thing is that 75,000 that we announced is an average budget that we expect um, uh, to to implement your use case. Uh, but the maximum amount can be 85,000. That's based on the EU funding rules that the maximum cash contribution that one company can uh, receive during this open call is 60,000. So plus your 30% contribution that makes the entire budget 85. So that's the maximum that you um, can receive here. But the 75 is um, average uh, based on our experience yeah so if uh, i didn't answer your question Konstantinos, then please um, uh, specify okay so and uh, stefan i will read for you the um, uh, other questions please yes. answer them uh, yeah so uh, given the architecture description and given that we plan to propose a pest sensor development would you recommend uh, sharing the data with Atlas directly through the sensor or gathering the data to our decentralized cloud database and connect this database with Atlas? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, question. Um, it, I would say it depends on 
what are the, the real capabilities of, of your sensor? I do not know this. I mean, for, for sharing data directly, um, sharing data directly, you would uh, need, of course, um, connectivity, right? And uh, if, if you have that connectivity, if you can make sure you have that connectivity, then you can, of course, directly somehow to, uh, connect uh, your sensor network to to the atlas uh, atlas network uh, but for for this you would also need some kind of of uh, 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 processing capability on the field you would at least uh, at least need a, a small computer which is able to uh, to run that that atlas data service which uh, connects to the atlas network and in which provides uh, the data then on on request. So I would I would really recommend to to go to the to the second uh, solution you proposed that that you have a, a so-called companion service in the Atlas network uh, uh, somewhere on a, on a server in the internet and which then connects to your to your sensing device and uh, collects all, all the data and you make that data available through that companion service. So that's, for example, that, that's also the way all, uh, our, uh, our other sensor networks we have already installed on, on some of the test sites, which are mainly soil moisture sensors, weather stations, all these kind of environmental sensing devices. They all connect to a dedicated uh, cloud service, and then the data is made available from from that cloud service uh, through a, a Atlas uh, data service to the network. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next uh, next question from Konstantinos again. Um, are weather data predictions uh, available through the Atlas network? edit or recorded or real time uh, I, I mean we have we have a partner uh, a company from switzerland which is called meteomatics and they are part of the consortium and they can uh, provide all kinds of, of weather data um, and uh, i mean it, it depends on on a little bit on the use case you are planning but I, I'm sure we, we can make a, a, a agreement to, to have this data they are providing uh, available for your project. So I would, I would uh, uh, just recommend that you write that down in your proposal, what data you, you would need, what kind of weather data. And um, if, if in case you are select, selected for, for funding and you can uh, start with your project, uh you can be sure that that you that we will provide the data you need but we we, we would uh would be good if we if we knew that uh uh before you you start so i encourage you to write uh that down in the proposal what what you are planning to do and and what data you would need from from atlas okay thank you i hope that's clear Constantinus. if it's not get back to us. Um, the next question from Stasis, um, when is the IPI specification expected to be provided? We are, we are currently uh, working on it and you can expect uh, something, I would say uh, for in, in mid-September is, is a realistic date to have a first API specification ready. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, very popular question from Mina, who are eligible to apply. Um, I don't know how, how else to uh, write this information on our web page. We are constantly receiving this question. Um, in, in general, the answer, um, a short answer will be you have to be uh, an SMA uh, company and you have to be registered in one of the eligible countries. Yep. Uh, so please go on our web page and find more information there. Or you can um, now, the, uh, we uploaded some handouts for you 
uh, for all participants. Uh, you can download them um, from the dashboard of the GoToWebinar um, and you will uh, find the answer, uh, yeah, broad answer to this question in one of the um, uh, uploads. I think it's a budget question, so it's budget and legal questions um, stuff. Right, um, that was a question from Mina. Um, uh, the next question from Christoph. Um, thank you for the presentation. What kind of satellite data will be available? Which satellites? What mm -hmm. would the um, specificity, sorry, uh, process data, resolution, spectral bands, etc.? Thanks. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, answer all the details. I mean, we, we have the, the, the Sentinel-1, 1, 1, 2, and, and uh, I think all the Sentinels, I'm not sure if there is a Sentinel-3, but at least 1 and 2, we, we have uh, available through, through various partners. We have the, the National Observatory of Athens. They have a, a, a very good access to, to most of the satellites. Um, this is something uh, that's uh, more I cannot say about about uh, this. Uh, but uh, I mean, I can I can uh, pass this question forward to our experts, and then we can give a, a detailed answer on on the web page. Okay, so, thank you very much. Yeah, Christoph, we um, we will not uh, your question and uh, yeah forward it yeah. Uh, further to our colleagues, and I will get back to you yeah. once we received uh, uh, feedback. Uh, thank you from Konstantinas. He said uh, great answers, everything's clear. Um, Dafina said hello, hello, Dafina. If you wanted to submit a question, uh, we don't see it. Um, another question from Andrea. Um, thanks for your presentation. Which kind of weather data you provide? Uh, what frequency they have? Do you mm -hmm. provide hourly leaf wetness data? Uh, actually, I, I'm, yeah, I also have to to check what what our weather stations are uh, recording recording. So it's it's the the, the normal uh, or so to say normal data you get from a weather station. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Air temperature uh, in, in different heights, wind uh, uh, radiance is is also uh, covered by most of the stations. Humidity, uh, precipitation. Uh, we have soil moisture sensors. We have leaf wetness sensors, and uh, probably more. I'm, 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 but I'm not. I'm not sure what I can. I have also I have to to check and. Um, we will we uh, will answer that that question then on 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 the website um and for the for the weather forecast for the weather nowcasts i also have to to ask for the details sorry for this no no i don't think it's a problem it's okay um thank you andrea for the question again we will um uh, yeah save it and get back to you a bit later yeah the question from dafina um we already have a service under development based on Copernicus EU data, uh, Earth observation mm -hmm. data. Besides this, we need additional sources of data like weather to enhance our services. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Um, would this be... Uh, yeah, I think that uh, some part of the question is missing, Dafina. Because the next thing I see, would this be eligible? Or no. okay, so she's asking about additional uh, sources of data, like weather, mm -hmm. or to enhance our service. Would this be eligible? And also, I'm not sure if it was already stated. If we succeed and enter the Atlas project, we also need to provide data that will be available in the Atlas network. So that's a question. Do they need to provide? the data uh, that will be available in the Atlas network. Uh, yeah, the I'm question not, is, not sure the if show. I get that, that, that question. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, if, if, you, if you are implementing a, a service which delivers some kind of data and you want that, that service to be used by, by the end users, which I think you, you want to have that, then you would need to connect your service to the Atlas network and, and provide the data. 
That's yes. the, the key behind Atlas, that, that you provide your, your data to, to possible end users, and then you can build your business case upon, upon this. So it's, uh, of course, you are not uh, required to provide that data for free. Um, uh, but what you what we expect you to do is that you of course can demonstrate that your solution works. So you will you will in case you are selected, you will work together with with one of our our test farms. You will get uh, all the data we, we we can give you to to implement your your service. We we can test that, and if that works, uh, you can be part of the Atlas network and. Um, then uh, other uh, interested uh, interested end users can can use your your service and uh, you you can uh, uh, make make your business model upon this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, uh, Dafina also asked if the additional sources of data will be available, like weather. But I think you already answered, right? Um, yes. Yeah, Dafina, if, uh, uh, if something is unclear or you need more uh, details, so, so please let us know. Um, yeah, and the final comment from Mina, thanks for the comprehensive presentation and the answers. Yes, uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, thank you, all participants. Our time is up, and so we are finishing now. Uh, again, uh, all the uh, downloads, um, are available right now during the session. You can download them and use, and we also available for you all the time um, uh, via email or website or database. Uh, so you can write your message anywhere. We will receive it, and we are looking for your proposals and for more questions. And uh, yeah, so uh, we are saying goodbye till the next week. Next week will be final uh, webinar when we will cover the rest of our challenges, the last four challenges, and also will answer your general questions. Um, and yeah, thank you, Stefan, again for your presentation and for your time today. Thanks, Tamara, for organizing this, and thanks to all the participants for your interest. And we are looking forward for your proposals. Yeah, exactly. So thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Ciao. Have a nice day. Goodbye.